Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be talking about scheduling. This is another video in my scheduling series. If you haven't seen uh, the first video, it is a deep dive on how the scheduler algorithm works. So I'd recommend that if you're interested. Um, but if not, you can jump in here too, because today we'll be talking about how we actually program the scheduler from a Kubernetes user perspective using node selectors, node affinity, and pod affinity. First of all, we have already done a video on labels, but let's do a, a very quick recap on uh, why we need to think about labels when we're um, talking about scheduling. So, first of all, there are key value pairs that are attached to objects. They specify attributes of objects, so for example, if a node had an SSD and the rest of our nodes had a HDD, we could specify that using a label. It is not something that Kubernetes picks up on itself. It's something that we have to program. Um, there's no tie between uh, a label and any kind of, you know, physical piece of um, hardware or anything like that. It's simply something that we use to identify an item that may have some underlying attribute that we want to be able to uh, select for. It allows us to organize groups of objects and it allows us to map organizational structures to objects. So if we have an application that's running on multiple different pods, we can label each of those pods. Um, for example, over here, we have app is my web app. So we may add this label to all of the pods that are running my web app. And then we can very easily select for my web app when we need to do so. For example, when we're setting up a replica set, or if we want to uh, set up a service for my web app, or if we want to schedule my web app in a certain uh, set of nodes or in a certain geographical uh, location. The first method of scheduling is the node selector. It allows us to specify a label that a node should have to run a particular pod. So in this example here, we have size large. That is a label that the node we are looking to run this particular pod on must have. The label must already exist on the node. This is prior to deploying the pod. And the pod will only be scheduled when the label is matched. So it's a kind of a binary on or off um, selection process. And it does not facilitate conditional logic. So here, Let's say we wanted to uh, schedule the pod on nodes that are either large or medium. We don't actually have the ability to do that with node selector. It's just a simple, a single, um, it's just a, a single label that we can specify. Next is node affinity. This is where the Kubernetes API allows us to specify more complex expressions. So what does node affinity allow us to do? It allows us to, to use advanced expressions to determine where a pod can be placed within our cluster. There are two types of node affinity. The first is required during scheduling, ignored during exception. I know this is a very kind of long and ugly uh, feel to have in a YAML file, but simply what that means is that the expression that we have defined underneath this field must be met during scheduling, but when the pod has already been deployed to the cluster, if something changes on the node that the pod is deployed and the condition is no longer met, we ignore that. We don't make any changes, we don't evict the pod. The second type of node affinity is preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution. 
So in this case, we say that matching the expression that we have defined is a preference but it is not required. If we don't find a node that matches the expression, the pod will still get scheduled, but if there is a node that matches the expression, that will be given preference. So node selector terms. So under each of these uh, big ugly fields required during scheduling, ignored during execution, we have this node selector terms field as well. And under that, we have our expressions. So simply inside node selector terms, it allows us to specify multiple expressions. And those expressions are evaluated um, similar to like an or statement, meaning that if one of the expressions is true, then the whole expression the whole compound expression is then true so for example if uh, we had specified another expression under here but this expression is false and the other expression is true then we can still schedule the pod on this on the particular node that we have defined again not both of those expressions have to have to match Now, there are a few node affinity operators that we can use. The first one is in. This allows us to specify a list of values that the value of the label can have. So if we go back here, we see that we are using the in operator and the values are large or medium. So we, we can have a label uh, where the key size and the value can be either large or medium. And both of those will cause the expression to evaluate the true, meaning that we can schedule the pod on that particular, on any particular node that has either large or, or medium as the uh, value of the size label. The next uh, node affinity operator is not in. In this case, it is it operates the same as in, except the list that you're giving, uh, the, the value must be excluded from that list. The next one is exists. In this case, we're not even thinking about the value. We just have to see a label that matches the key. So if we go back here, if we had key is size operator ex is exists, we wouldn't even have this values section. All we have to match is a label with the key size. So let's say all of our nodes had the key size, then we could deploy to any node in the cluster. Does not exist, again, is the opposite of that. So any node with uh, a label that has a key um, that we specify must be excluded from our uh, scheduling targets. And then finally, there is greater than and less than. This allows us to provide a numeric value that the value that we specify here is greater than or less than. Okay. Now, node affinity weight. A weight can be added to preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution type of affinity. And what this does this is added to the node score when the expression is matched. So when the scheduler is evaluating where a pod should be run in the cluster, it produces a score for each particular node. If we add a weight, then that weight will be added to that particular score based on whether or not it matches uh, that expression. Now, Pod affinity is another type of affinity that allows us to distribute pods across our cluster based on where pre-existing pods are located. So essentially, as I said, where can pods be located relative to each other? It's used to co-locate pods or separate pods. 
So if we have an application where it's very important to have very fast communication, we may want to deploy those uh, two pods that are communicating onto the same node or into a similar geographic location. And the same goes if we want to have a highly redundant um, application. It may be important for us to distribute pods across the cluster and not have them all uh, congregating on one node because that node may go down and that will cause an impact to our application. Label selectors are used to match pods and we must use the namespace for the labels because labels are a namespace object. And again, we have the same uh, affinity types as node affinity. So if we look at this example here, we see we have pod affinity required during scheduling, ignored during execution. That means it's a hard rule that we must match. Then the label selector gives us an expression. The label security must have this S1 value. So what does that mean in terms of our scheduling process? It means that the node that we are deploying this particular pod to must have another pod that has a label security equals S1. However, as you can see here, there is also this topology key field that we have defined and this allows us to provide another layer on top of uh, the standard functionality of pod affinity. Instead of just specifying the particular node that we can deploy to, it allows us to actually specify the zone in which the node is deployed. So it gives us a pool of nodes. So we, in this case, we can deploy to any node that matches the zone of a pod that has a label security S1. So if there, let's say we have a, a Kubernetes cluster deployed across three different zones, one of those zones has a pod that has this label security S1, then when we go to deploy this new pod, we can only deploy it to that particular zone. It may not land on the same exact node, but it will land on the same zone. Then pod anti-affinity. This is, as I mentioned, to allow us to distribute pods. So in this particular case, let's have a look at the example. We do not want to deploy this pod onto a node that has the label security S2. So we want to deploy it to the node that has security S1, but not security S2. Again, we have the topology key. So this allows us to select for a zone, but that is generally how we would evaluate this. And this is a preferred during scheduling, ignored during execution rule. So it's not a hard rule, but it is weighted quite highly. So we're probably going to avoid uh, any node that has this label security is S2. And that is our little video on Kubernetes scheduling methods. There will be uh, more scheduling methods to come, but this has covered some uh, foundational methods. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I'll get straight back to you. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.